Hey, this is Dominic, and this is your home for the cutting edge conversations on optimizing your personal performance, lighting up your sex life, and living a purpose driven life of your own design. These are the topics that Dominic and I have both struggled with in our own lives and still don't always get right. This is Brian. Welcome to the Great Man Podcast. Fellas, one of the most recurring questions that we get from you is, how can I improve my performance in the bedroom? It's a great question, but I'd like to offer you a new way of asking it. How can I improve my leadership in the bedroom? You see, viewing sex as a performance often keeps you in your head, making you more self-conscious and disconnected from your partner, which prevents intimacy and better sex from happening. So today, we're going to talk about how to lead her in the bedroom, which, as you may imagine, oftentimes starts outside of the bedroom. And our guide for the discussion today is the unapologetic, vibrant powerhouse, Monica Yates. So who is Monica Yates? Well, in addition to being a good friend of Brian and myself, she is a women's coach and community leader who guides hundreds of women to embody their feminine essence, reconnect to the power of their period, and to speak up for what they want in bed. As you're going to hear, Monica is a huge advocate for men, and she teaches women how to stop unconsciously emasculating men and rejecting men's attempts to lead in relationship. As a reformed emasculator herself, she teaches women how to receive more from their masculine partners so they can also give more to their man. She runs the Feminine as Fuck podcast, which Brian and I have had the honor of being on, I think, twice now. And at the end of this podcast, she'll give you a number of episodes that you can listen to to further your work. Some of those are entitled... For my men, how to be in your masculine to guide her deeper into her feminine, understanding period sex for men and women, and how to balance your masculine and feminine energies in both men and women. So those are some good episodes for you to listen to, and I'll link those in the show notes. And so in this episode, Monica talks about why the seduction process starts well outside of the bedroom. And that's a theme that we've heard in many interviews that we've done with women coaches and sexuality coaches, feminine coaches. So please heed that advice. We talk about why you as the man having the ability to communicate your desires effectively and your emotions allows her to feel safe and to give more of herself to you. Monica talks about the most important thing that your woman needs from you when she's having a meltdown how your ability to set powerful boundaries is like an aphrodisiac to her. And then finally, why your inability to temporarily disconnect from work and life responsibilities and be with her 100% present is a major barrier to you developing a deep sexual connection with her. Enjoy today's episode of How to Lead Her in the Bedroom featuring Monica Yates. So Monica, after the week that you've had, I'm wondering how was that breath work that we just did? Did that settle you in or what? Yeah, it grounded me. It was good. It was needed. I've never seen Monica this quiet before. (laughs) Before the breath work, Monica was speaking at 25 words a second. (laughs) And now she's just giggling. Why do you think everyone was messaging me being like, are you okay? Where are you on Instagram? People get very concerned. If I've only done like two Instagram stories, people like, something is wrong with Monica. And then of course, when I went MIA on Instagram, then it obviously everyone was like, Monica's literally died. For context, Monica's Instagram account got hacked this week. Well, it's still, it's in, we're now at, a, at another level. So it's, it's getting fixed in the next 24 hours. My amazing hacker was able to do some stuff. Protect your accounts, people. Let me get this straight. You hired a hacker to hack your hacked Instagram account. Is that Yeah. So she's like a corporate hacker. And so she was going to like hack it back basically. But what we, we did some things firstly where she was like, I want to pause here because if we go any further, there is a chance that Instagram will delete the account because they will see me trying to hack it back. So let's just get Instagram involved again now. We got to like a new different page. I can send I can send them like new different stuff. So like a different case kind of went through. So, you know, in the next 24 hours, I'll get an email and they'll do like facial recognition basically through the email. And then that will 
that will get me my account back. But I will actually just say for, because obviously you'd have a lot of men listening with like, and like even women entrepreneurs, I'm actually going to have her on my podcast because she is like an IT genius. And I'm like, we need to know some tips, like maybe you guys as well, of like, how can we protect our Instagram accounts and our social media? Because for so many of us, like me included, it's like my livelihood. Like actually it's not even my livelihood, but I was thinking about the amount of Instagram influences where it is their livelihood. It's their whole business. They don't have like an email list and that kind of stuff or a podcast. So yeah. Anyway, that's, that's been my week. It's been riveting. (laughs) <laughs> I just like the idea that you can go hire a hacker. I thought I thought that was only in movies. Did you go to Fiverr? Did you, how do you find a hacker? So I found her because my like CMO PR chick, she was trying to help me figure out what we could do. Firstly, I went through Instagram and Facebook and whatever, but it was quite a useless process to begin with for various reasons, which I'll do an episode on to go into it to not waste time on here. But um, anyway, and then Hannah was like, look, I've been following this lady for a while. Why don't you just reach out to her and see if she can help? Hannah actually reached out to Chelsea first. And then Chelsea was like, yes, I can help. Let's get on a call. So she got me on a call for 30 minutes just to like chat and just like help me a little bit, give me some like free advice. And I was like, you are literally an angel. Like I honestly was like, the universe has sent me like an actual angel. And then obviously, like I was saying before today, then Sarah's friend was like, wait, who the fuck is this account that I'm following? And then it was my account with like a changed name and changed bio and like a couple hundred Instagram followers less. And so we were able to then get like the URL and then I don't know, Chelsea was able to do some stuff, but I literally yesterday, I asked everyone I knew, I've even phoned James Bond to see if he knew any hackers. James Bond is her nickname for someone in the military that, that does we've covert had on ops. Off, yeah. yeah, that we've had like yeah. on and off relationships with. Anyway, I think I might've mentioned him to you really briefly, Brian, like when I, when maybe you saw me in Williamsburg, I don't know. Anyway, I reached out to every single person that I could think of of like, does anybody know a hacker? Anyway, I got this chick and honestly, I'm just grateful that Sarah's friend was able to see this account because otherwise it was going to be super hard to get it back. But the fact that Sarah's friend was able to like see this, it was like, just like, honestly, it was like the, I'm being supported by the universe. I appreciate that you went and found a hacker because usually I just go to the bottom of the website. I hit help and I hit a ticket, but you're like, nah, nah. I'm going to get a hacker. Yeah, fuck that shit. I don't have time for that. I'm actually a bit disappointed that you don't have your own personal hacker, man. This is 2020. Well, I right? am now. It's a good point. I know, I, know, Monica, Chelsea, you, yeah. I know that you have one. I'm just disappointed that Brian doesn't have one. Everyone has one, right? Don't don't you we have all a hacker, done? Oh, do you have a hacker? No, I don't, I don't have a hacker. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't, I didn't I mean, know we still like, have hackers. Like the, I if, need to add this to my budget. Well, since this, I've actually said to Chelsea, I'm hiring you as my IT chick because IT stresses me out so much. And it's like... It's a make or break kind of thing, like when you have an online business and and whatnot, and you need to be like a genius at it because it's so complicated. So like to have someone kind of like on speed dial when you need them, like what a stress release, like what a stress reliever. So yeah, I'm going to be hiring Chelsea as like my IT person. So when I have problems like this and she's going to secure the fuck out of everything so nobody can get past fucking Monica, the end. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like back in the day, you needed a business coach. Now you need like a therapist or a counselor or a life coach. And then in 2020, you're going to need your own personal hacker to protect your yeah. shit online. This is the world that Literally. we live in right now. So anyway. Yeah, 2020, it's like you need a healer, a therapist, a business coach, <laughs> a life coach, a relationship coach, a trauma coach, and a hacker. <laughs> Just to be able to be average at life, you need all those things. <laughs> to be able to survive 2020, basically. I like how Monica brings fuck into everything. Yeah, I do, don't I? I? You know, you're, you're secure as fuck, fucking lock everything down. You're feminist as fuck as your branding and your tagline. Like... I feel like you've got you've got a lot of fuck going on, which is fortunate Mm -hmm. for our podcast topic today. Well, speaking of which, yeah, I mean, today we're talking about how to drive your woman wild in bed, and who better to teach us about that than you, Monica, who who has your own obviously personal, yeah, yeah, who has your has your own opinions, but you also sit on top of a community of women who you hear it all from. You're entering rarefied air because you are now a two time guest on our show. This is the first time though that we've actually interviewed you because. The first time you appeared on our on our podcast, you had interviewed Brian and I yeah. for your show, Cacao and Convos, yeah. which is a podcast you're going to go on and check out. Um, and we repurposed that episode. So for our listeners who didn't have the benefit of hearing that one, why don't you just give a quick overview of like who you are, 
Who's the community that you serve? Like what are, and, and who are the women that come to you and what are they, what are they asking for in their lives? Always like lots, lots of different reasons. But the main thing is I talk about like feminine energy, trauma, you know, being that feminine woman where you let a man lead, stop fucking emasculating men, stop trying to be this like hardcore, I'm better than men kind of thing. And a lot of women don't even, it's quite triggering the stuff I talk about. A lot of women don't realize that they are that woman until I trigger the fuck out of them. And they're like, shit, I'm that person. And I used to be that woman. People often find me through all my period stuff because I'm also the period whisperer. Women's periods come back randomly all the time from working with me. And I know a lot about our cycle. So women will often find me from looking up stuff like that on Google or on Apple, iTunes, Thinking Bob. And then they'll hear me talk about like, you know, emasculation or how you won't let a man open a door. Or if he does, then you assume he thinks that you're weak, X, Y, and Z. And I just kind of go through the whole process of how it's a load of bullshit and how you receiving from a man does not make you submissive in a bad way. It does not mean that you're getting walked all over. It's actually just like the feminine and masculine energy. It will make your life so much fucking better if you're in your feminine and it will make your partner's life if you're in a, in a heterosexual relationship. It'll make your man's life so much better for him to be in his masculine. And even if you're in a same-sex relationship, if you're the feminine, it'll still make your partner's life better if they naturally want to be in their masculine as opposed to constantly butting heads. Like you need polarity, whether it's in a same-sex relationship or a heterosexual relationship. So I kind of help women to like release all their trauma around the feminine and masculine, let go of all their masculine armor that we carry around and help them to like welcome in that feminine energy, do a lot of like anger release, trauma healing, breath work stuff, womb clearing, a lot of sexual trauma, stuff from when you were kids, like for when you were little, that kind of stuff. But on the topic of what we're talking about today, one of the main things I also do is help women to really tap into their sensuality. Oh, lots of throat chakra opening stuff as well. Speaking about what they want in the bedroom, drawing boundaries, all that kind of stuff. I'm an Enneagram 8, so I have never been a people pleaser. So I love talking about boundaries. And yeah, it always comes up as topic conversation in every one of my programs, in every client session that I've done is like understanding men. But then on the reverse side, it's like, how can I get my man to give me what I want? So talking about that today is obviously what we're going to do. You know, I've had hundreds of clients now where I've gone through plenty of different scenarios, different relationships, different marriages, X, Y, and Z. And I've got a pretty good array of what women want in bed from like women that are more like earthy and grounded to women that are like CEO boss babes and what they want in bed. Yeah, I'm here to give the juice. Love that. Monica, is it is it diverse? Is it unique to every single person? Or do you see some themes across these different types of people? Definitely see some themes, 100%. Themes also based on like where the woman is in her life and what she'll want. If she's stressed, what does she want? If you guys are on holiday, what does she want? So I've picked up quite a few different, like the bottom line is women are complex creatures. We're not complicated. We're just complex And so the more that you are honestly open-minded and you're welcoming of the complex nature of us, the easier life's going to be. The more that you aren't embodied, therefore you can't stand strong and welcoming all of our different flavors. You just like get frustrated by the fact that like, wait, one minute she's, she's over here and like slam her on the wall. And then the next minute she's like wanting cuddles in bed. Like I'm so confused or one minute she's so fucking angry and she's crying and having a meltdown. And the next minute she's dancing. And and instead of being like confused and like, and projecting shame about that, if you're embodied and you're able to stand firm in your own masculine energy as a man, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to welcome all of like her different desires. Because the bottom line is like men can generally speaking, have the same stake every night. Women, no, we want a different something every night. I'm talking about sex, by the way. Monica, slow, <laughs> slow, slow it down really quick because I have I have a pen and my yeah. notepad here. I have a highlighter and I'm, I, I have throw against wall. Was that right? Okay, got that one. And then eat steak yeah. only. Got it. Yes. No, so Perfect. you guys, you guys are able to order the same fucking thing off the menu every night. We don't. We want an array. We want to change it up you know, when we feel like it, we want a menu to choose from. We don't want the same thing all the time. And you can even see this, for example, in like morning routines, classic as I always say, women, we pick up the book of like how to get up at 5am, whatever the, the book says right now, it's written by men for men. Those habit books, a lot of them are written by men for men. And the problem with that then is that women try and follow it. And it lasts for about two months 
And then one day they go, fuck this, I hate this. And then they go to the other end of the spectrum where they have no morning discipline and they don't have any good habits in their life because their habits just brought them like anger, stress, and frustration around if I don't do my morning meditation, I'm a bad person or I didn't follow the book. And that's just an example of like you guys as men can do the same thing every fucking day. Women cannot. So even with morning routines, I say to my clients like, you need to have like a list of different things that you could do in the morning and you pick and choose based on what you're feeling like that morning. That is how a morning routine will last for a woman where you tune into what you want in that moment. Do a morning routine, but mix it up every day. But the idea of I have to do the same shit every fucking day, it will drive women insane because we're not, we don't want that. It doesn't make us feel in flow. It doesn't make us feel like turned on by life or anything. It's just gross to be honest. Yeah. So what the message is loud and clear is like a man's ability to welcome the fact that she's ever changing and that like yeah. there's an emotion present one moment that may be gone the next moment. And to instead of be frustrated by that, to recognize that this is like the nature of what makes her so beautiful and flowing and to have like these rich experiences. So I want to go deeper into that. But before we do, you said something at the beginning about how you teach women how to stop emasculating men and how to let men lead. And you were one of these women yourself and that most of the women that like you speak to don't realize that they're that woman. Can you give some examples of how women may emasculate men in bed? Because, or I would say in the bedroom when a man's trying to lead, because I think that would help make it real for many of our male listeners. So some really common examples is like the classic one is often in your head. You will have some narration when a man does something for you of like, I can do it myself. Or you will even say, I can do it myself. Or he'll say, for example, or like, let me pay for dinner. And it's like, no, no, no. Instead of being like, thanks. Or for example, in the bedroom, if we were to use the bedroom as an example, if he's wanting to, like, if he is trying to do something with you or whatever, like he's trying to do a new position and you go, what are you doing? That's emasculation. Another example could simply be like, he sends you a flirty message and you're like, what? I don't have time for this. Like that's emasculation. It's basically just like you wronging him for anything that he's wanting to do for you. So like, let me open the door for you or like, let me plan the holiday or let me make you dinner. And then you go, this is like, I don't want that. Like, why did you make that for me? I was, I said, I wanted chicken, right? And he made fucking beef or whatever it is. That's emasculation. And it's super common. And, and, What I've narrowed it down to is like a lot of us carry so much anger towards men. And so it comes out as bitterness and emasculation because we don't know how to one, release our own anger. I think it's for clients this morning, actually one, we don't know how to release our own, our own anger. And then two, we don't understand the concept and the idea that like that men and women can be equals, but be different. And I did a whole Instagram post on this and like, you know, I got an amazing amount of great feedback. And then also the classic Karen's and Susan's that twist my, oh my God, I saw something on Instagram the other day. And it was so funny. I have to tell you guys, it was like, it was like, this is Instagram. And then it was like me, I don't like oranges. And then it was like Karen and Susan, oh my gosh, you're saying pineapples and, and apples and X, Y, and Z aren't good enough. And you're like, I didn't fucking like, I was like, that is Instagram. Uh, Karen's and Susan's man. I mean, but I feel so bad for anyone named Karen and Susan. I know. It's like their, their names have been totally hijacked. <laughs> and it's like- anyway, so I did, I did like a post basically just sharing this of like, you know, the idea that men and women are going to be equal is like saying apples and cauliflower flowers are the same. They are not the same. We got, we are not the same. We have a different fucking like brain. Basically we do have a different brain. And so, you know, I always was trying to like fight against men of being better than them or proving that I was enough or that I was equal or that I was strong enough instead of being like, actually, I don't need to prove any of that. Men know that we're amazing. Unless you're like an actual asshole, men know that we're amazing, which most aren't. And so I don't need to prove myself. I'm allowed to honor my desire that I don't want to like build my own desk, for example. And he's allowed to honor, you know, my emotions. Like we can be equal and be different. So that's kind of the emasculation piece. It sounds like a lot of this is is the art of receiving. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And and not making an internal dialogue about it of like, oh, now he wants to sleep with me. Like he's doing he's doing this because he wants to sleep with me. Right, exactly. Well I imagine sometimes that is true. Yeah. Maybe not always the case. I mean, I can tell you from my perspective, I love it 
when Becca receives something that that I've cooked, that I've built, that she she can go and like relax on something that I built to work on something. Like I love that. There is nothing hotter or that turns me on more than that. And you know, I know we're talking about the what, what is the topic? The light lighting up the bedroom. <laughs> what, 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 yeah, ways to drive her wild. The bed. Wild, 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 yeah. yeah, and like that's that's the outcome. But why I like that we're talking about this first is what we're talking about is, is how to create the environment. Because I think the Correct. sex part of it is just the outcome. It's just the symptom of the environment that we create. I was Yeah, I was going to say, like, don't just think of this, like, as a bedroom thing. It starts out of the bedroom. Like, if you don't have integrity in your relationship, that's going to be the problem in the bedroom. Like, if you say something and then don't do it, her heart's closed. And no matter what you fucking do, it's not going to be open in the bedroom. So, like, this actually starts outside of the bedroom. Like, honestly, you could have you could have vanilla sex and it would be the best vanilla bean you've ever had in your fucking life if outside of the bedroom you've created the best environment. I mean, I've had some, like, some of the best sex where, you know, it hasn't been that we've tried 7 million positions in the bedroom. It's been the fact that, like, he's cooked me dinner with no shirt on. I sit on the kitchen bench. We make out a bit whilst cooking dinner Mm. then he cleans up then we go to the bed like that's to me is like fucking amazing because i love long foreplay for example and i need to know and every woman actually needs to know like he's trustworthy he's in integrity um like he's not gonna hurt me like safety and like if there's safety outside of the bedroom the woman's gonna feel so much safer in the bedroom and that safety will allow her to surrender so a lot of women don't know this, but it's like a trauma thing. It's like you, if you don't feel a thousand percent safe in your environment and with that man, you will not be able to let go and you will not be able to have amazing sex and you won't speak about what you want. And now I've even seen women and it's like, oh, but I'm like married. Like I feel totally safe, but they actually don't feel safe. And the reason why they don't feel safe is because, and this again, it's like, I'll, there's two tangents to this. They don't feel safe because he's not strong enough for them to really relax. So what I mean by this, for example, is I was doing a session with a client. We were doing some trauma work and I actually said, can you go grab your husband for me? So she went and grabbed him and brought him into the room that we were in. And we just did something that was helping her body to stop having a trauma response when he touched her like really softly. Then I was taking him through some stuff and when he touched her arm just lightly, there was still a trauma response. But when he touched it really hard and grabbed her around her shoulders actually really hard, she felt so fucking safe. I kind of explained it to both of them of how that worked and everything. And they had the best sex of their fucking life. How does that work, Monica? What was it about the soft versus the firm touch? So the soft is like, we still need to be in control. Like we're not fully safe. You don't, you're not showing to us physically. We can't feel it. That you are hard as a fucking rock. That you will not let us move. It's that like protected energy, right? And so then in the bedroom, he was a lot rougher and just a lot more sturdy in his energy even. So it was also an energy thing if he needed to feel sturdier in his energy and physically. And because of that, and even just because he knew that he could be more hard physically with her, like as in hands, not just penis, then what it meant was that in the bedroom, she knew that. And so she was able to relax more. But because for so long, he hadn't given that like hardness to her and that strength to her. She felt like she needed to be the masculine and the feminine in the relationship. And so she didn't fully trust him to let go. And so there wasn't that element of like masculine, really, really tough, hard, strong masculine energy there for her to surrender. I think it's really important to add here for a man who's listening to this, that the important point here is calibration. The point Monica's making here is don't just grab your woman and just like, you know, like grip her hard because yeah. your woman may have the adverse response. Like if, if like you're not calibrating to her. So it's, it's about like she wants to feel like you're there with fervor. Madeline Moon yeah. taught us this and, and like, you know, your friend Madeline yeah. about like one of the ways that men, you know, lose credibility with women is like we don't go after it with fervor. If we're too gentle, if we're too hesitant, then she can feel that yep. she has to hesitation, remain in control. Not a vibe. Not a vibe, right? Like the hesitation is like you communicating that you don't trust yourself. Exactly. Therefore, she has to keep her guard up and cannot relax into the moment. Yeah. So going on this topic still, so for a lot of men, there's a, and I see it 
all the time because I'm super hyper aware of this now because I love obviously speaking up for you guys. And because if a man was to speak up about this, you'd be put in jail. So like a lot of men, they will be so kind of standoffish because they don't want a woman turning around going, this is sexual assault. This is sexual harassment. When they were like, oh my God, I did not mean it like that. So men also, they don't know how to, how to operate in this world basically. And so they're hesitant, not because they want to be hesitant, but because they don't want a lawsuit slapped in their face or they don't want to be accused of something that they had no intention of doing basically. So their hesitation isn't their fault. I would actually argue, and this is controversial, I would argue it's partly our fault as women because we don't know how to communicate to them of this is what I need. And so many of us can't create our own safety and speak up right? So then what happens is we won't speak up or we don't heal our past trauma. And so our past trauma affects us from speaking up in the current situation. So we don't speak up and then we just turn around and slap a lawsuit on them instead of, and obviously there's cases, a million percent, there's cases where the woman couldn't speak up or she tried and it was ignored. And I'm not, I'm not disregarding that whatsoever, but I'm saying this is not a man's fault and this is not a woman's fault either. And like, I did a post on my Instagram a while back kind of sharing something about men of how we need that sturdy. Yeah, I was saying in order for the masculine to relax and surrender and whatever, we need that really strong – sorry, in order for the feminine to relax and surrender, we need that really strong masculine energy. This is what we need for men, X, Y, and Z. And somebody commented saying, we need more men like this. And I was like, whoa, no, no, no. We don't need more men like this. We need more women to learn how to communicate this and create a safe environment for men to do this because a lot of men would actually say they don't feel safe – to be really strong and really confident and really upfront with a woman, they're a bit standoffish because they're trying to read her and not get a lawsuit slapped in their face, right? So even with the firmness of like, well, how do I know how firm to touch her? Just ask her. Literally, just ask her like, hey, I'm just, every woman's different. Literally, do you know how many women would get turned on by this question? Hey, every woman is just a bit different. So I want to know like what turns you on in bed and like, what like how much of my firmness do you want? Do you want soft touch or do you like hard touch? And this and this can happen from the very beginning. I find out a lot of guys we think that we're sly and that we can kind of slip in innuendos and not really express how we're feeling and pretend that we know things, right? Guy, we all yeah. love doing that. And what I've learned, I know Dominic has learned over the past several years is if we just state where we're at, like here is here is what I'm feeling, here is what I want to know, I know that I don't know everything, that is allowing us to calibrate and creates an environment that allows for a lot of sparks. And I've heard that feedback, Monica, that you're talking about from women is like, oh, you're actually interested in this? You're actually interested in how I want to be touched, how I want to be felt? Like that's amazing. It's so sexy. So I'm like, sexy. have my babies done? Like <laughs> – is it that fast, Monica? Is it go? Does it go from Pretty I don't much. know you to Pretty much. Like, how do you want to be touched do you know, do you know, to like? Seriously, the, the, okay, a line that made me go, "What the fuck?" Was well, in the way of the superior man, I was like, "That's it, impregnate me." <laughs> self-aware book. men are sexy like self-aware men and this is actually on my list to say like self-awareness is fucking sexy because when i say self-awareness i mean like a lot of people they might feel stress and anger but they don't have the self-awareness to then know this is what i need and so they project the self they project their feelings onto somebody else because they are not self-aware enough to go this is what caused it and this is what would what would let it go and so when a man is self aware enough to go, actually, I'm really needing X, Y, and Z. That's amazing because again, it creates that trusting environment where we feel so fucking safe. And actually, even with like the self-awareness and and a man being like, I'm going to say in touch with his emotions very loosely. I don't mean you need to cry in front of me. I mean that you can feel your emotions and you know what you're feeling. It's amazing. And it creates so much safety because when that, and I've had this from multiple clients, we then don't second guess oh, like, what's he thinking? Does he like me? Does he not? Because we know, or like, is there something wrong? We know that he would come to us if there was something wrong in the relationship. So him being able to communicate and being a good communicator and being unafraid to share, we feel so much safer because we know no games are being played. And so we can give more of ourselves to you and we'll also be able to receive more of you to ourselves. Let's double down on this Mm. one here. What I'm hearing is when a guy can, one, recognize the emotion that is in his body, can then articulate it, it provides a level of trust and maybe even transparency 
to a woman to now know like this is the truth. This is his yeah. truth. And that allows you to sink into the receiving and into that creative sexual energy. And we respect you a lot more then. There's so much more respect in the relationship, which makes for a way better relationship, like way better relationship. I, I know where I've gotten myself into troubles in past relationships and in this current relationship is when I bypass my emotion. When I just say like, I'm going too fast, I'm doing too much, I don't have time to really like feel this. And I'm not a natural feeler. It's taken me and Dominic knows this well because he's seen the transition. I would have said that feeling anything was a detriment to me moving forward and being productive in life. Now what I recognize is like when I'm in a relationship, my power comes from knowing where I'm at emotionally and being able to articulate in the moments that it needs to be articulated. And man, that's been so true in, the, in my current relationship. When things start to get stale, it's when I'm not in touch with what I'm feeling or articulating it. Yeah. And, and Monica, let's get really personal to you for a moment. So like you're in my relationship over the last like year or so, like I've had a chance to witness some of the men that you've been dating mm-hmm. right in your life. And, mm-hmm. and I know up until recently, the men that you've dated have not been on the inner work journey. Right. And now you're dating a guy who is on that inner work journey. And like you've, you've shared with me the differences that you've experienced between men who don't have the language, who don't have the ability to express their emotions. And then someone who you're dating presently who does, who gave you that line about in the way of the superior man. So can you talk about your own personal experience of what it's like to be with this guy versus maybe previous guys? Man, I have learned so much about myself. I would even say just in the past like two months since being with like Corona stuff, dating this dude, like that's into personal development, which I actually want to say something else about that situation. And then, and even just like moving to a new city, X, Y, and Z. I mean, I mean, obviously I'm super into like the trauma stuff and nervous system and X, Y, and Z. I had a whole episode on this and it was like game changing for a lot of people actually. And I was talking about how right now, especially for women, if your nervous system is a bit like like jacked, possibly the worst thing that you could do is get into a new relationship right now. If that's going to make you more stressed, more anxious, if you haven't healed your shit, because there's a lot of unknown in the beginning of a relationship. So that was kind of like one side of the spectrum of like, if you are someone that is very self-aware and you are feeling stressed especially right now with COVID and you go and date someone, whether they are into personal development or whether they are not, if you notice that your nervous system is getting a bit more stressed and you're getting a bit more anxious and you're getting a bit more worried about things, you will not be your best self. It doesn't fucking matter whether they are into personal development or not. Like this again is about being self-aware for men and for women. Like if you want to be the best you in a relationship, like you also need to know yourself. So it's really interesting because like reflecting back, I mean, I've dated now two dudes, like one before I got into this work that was super into this work as well. And he was kind of a catalyst for me getting into it. And it's interesting because I love that I can have conversations around the masculine and feminine. I love that, like, you know, we went to Paris together for the weekend and I love that he, like, he said to me, give me your list and then I'll plan the day and tonight. And I'm like, hell fucking yes. Like, and I love that, like, just, he took the lead and did that, but we've had conversations about it. And even with like his best friend as well, like his ex would never let him do that. But he also didn't know how to really be in the masculine and she didn't know how to be in her feminine. So I will say as a bit of a side note for any of your listeners, if you as a man are dating a woman that does not know how to be in her feminine, it's a whole other kind of kettle of fish because she knows how to, she needs to know how to receive. So you're going to have to like navigate that because a lot of women don't know how to receive. So if you are really, really trying to lead, she might not really let you or she could feel really, really uncomfortable in it. So it's honestly, it's fucking confusing because I feel like there is a bit of a bubble in the world and the bubble of personal development people, we're great at dating each other. And I will also say though, within that bubble, there are people that are so into the personal development world and so into the 5D and the spiritual that they're not grounded. And so the feminine will lose trust. Hey, Monica, that part that you're talking about, if a guy decides, I'm going to take this inner journey, I'm going to really step into my mature masculine and lead. And he's with a woman who is not in her strong feminine in her mature feminine, you're saying there might be friction there. Can you describe a little bit more about what that friction might look like? Totally. Okay. So in order for a woman to be in her feminine, she needs to feel safe to do so. So a lot of women, hence they are bitter, angry. They snap at their boyfriends all the time. They're like control freaks is like the common psychos. Like, oh my God, women are fucking crazy. They're psychos. 
that's not because women are psycho. It's because uh, so many women don't feel safe to be fully in their feminine. And so they're acting actually out of their own masculine and it creates like an unbalanced energy in their body. And it's actually coming from a lot of bitterness. So if the man that we're talking about in this like scenario is really wanting to take the lead with his masculine and she does not feel safe in her feminine from her own trauma, not from him, from her own shit, she will not be in her feminine and then it will be two masculines butting head. This was what happened to me. So I was dating this guy, Chris. This is before I got into my work with all this kind of stuff. And he definitely forced me as in like not physically forced, like energetically forced me into my feminine because that's polarity, right? Like he wasn't standing for me being super my masculine and whatever. And he would really take the lead. And I, I did love it. I felt cherished, but it was a wounded feminine of like, I am Rapunzel being saved. That's what it was. And so whenever it came to feelings or an argument or any kind of conflict in the relationship, because we were both massive hotheads there'd be so much friction because I would be so in my masculine because I did not know how to be in my feminine. I did not know how to tune into my heart. I did not know how to feel my emotions. In fact, I would purposely not feel any of that shit because it was gross. And I remember one argument very specifically, and he actually said to me, you are such a cold bitch. That moment was what made me go, whoa, when he described me as cold. And now people say I'm like one of the warmest people they know. So like total polar opposites. But back then he was super in his masculine. Would I will say definitely a wounded masculine, but still pretty good for the average dude these days. But because I was so in my masculine and I did not want to be in this soft, beautiful feminine, there was so much conflict and we would always butt heads and we would get into the biggest fucking arguments over literally nothing because it was just like, imagine just like two hot heads fighting all the time. We weren't all the time fighting, but that's kind of what it was. So it's just about if your woman can be at least aware of these things, it will just, it will change the dynamic and that will help. But if she, like, if we were to use the example of like, she's some CEO, boss, babe, hustle, 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 and he is wanting to get into his masculine as a generalization, I can see butting heads as a generalization. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Monica. So just to kind of summarize where we are so far, I mean, some of the the ways that you've guided men to drive their women wild in the bedroom is like, first one is it starts outside of the bedroom, right? Like seduction takes place long before. And this is one of the things that like we've heard about in various forms. We had a woman named Lauren Baptiste speak at one of our live events who said a woman's stress hormones oftentimes can get in the way of her sex hormones. If she's stressed out, if she's feeling unsafe or if she's working in a male dominated environment. So like that could require, you know, just like making the meal or the music, setting the environment like you're talking about. Whereas guys, it's kind of like, oh, my dick's hard. Let's go do it now. And so like there's like a pacing and a tempo. So it starts outside the bedroom. You talked about how like to even ask her the question of how much firmness do you want, which is awesome. And you gave that example of, you know, like your one client who she bristled when it was a soft touch and then she felt alive when it was a firmer touch. And then also like when a man can communicate and express his emotions you know, you said that women can then give more of themselves and then receive more from us. What's another way? Yeah. So I wanted to quickly just say, I kind of mentioned it before, but I want to really highlight this. For anyone listening, I've definitely noticed this. I am a 50-50 split between woo-woo, spiritual, 5D kind of stuff and like the <laughs> rational. Mm-hmm. And I will say that it, it is ungrounding. It is annoying. And it is just damn right. Just It doesn't make you feel really protected, frankly. If you're with a man that is so like up in the spiritual realm that can't be in the human. So for example, Instagram account gets hacked. It's all happening for a reason. Just breathe and relax. I'm sorry, what? (laughs) That's a very basic example. But like, you know, if it's always just rainbows and butterflies and it's always just like about the 5D cosmic world, I'm like, can we land on the planet for a second? Because that groundedness is what allows a woman to then feel safe and grounded. So we're going to feel more turned on in the bedroom and our bodies are going to be more open. This is super important. So I think maybe the world that you play in, like in the, in the, the audience that you cater to is, is much more either in the 5D, like spiritual realm and then, then, then like say our listeners in the sense that, but our listeners definitely know what that experience feels like, where it's like, as a man, we get, we get these conflicting messages of you're supposed to be the leader but you're supposed to be sensitive. You're supposed to be fearless, but you're also supposed to be tapped into your emotions and express and cry. And this is where guys get like really angry and upset because it's like, well, you wanted me to express my emotions to you. And then as soon as I did, 
then you look at me as less than. You won't want to fuck me anymore because now I'm a weak, you know. So like for these guys who are like frustrated and confused by that, it's like, where is that line, Monica? What is that balance? Because we've gotten so many conflicting messages. So I would say, for example, when your woman's having a meltdown, she needs full fucking protection rock. She wants to be, generally speaking, I'm like, again, you have to ask her because every woman's different. And I'm speaking on behalf of all my clients as well. We want to be smothered. We want to be held so tightly, like nothing can touch us. Then we can let go and we, and the feminine hates being stressed. Like there is nothing more that I hate in the world than feeling stress in my body and feeling like I've got no one to like crumble into. Like the best fucking feeling in the world is like crumbling into a man's chest and just bawling my eyes out. I did this like three weeks ago or four weeks ago and just like fully breaking and being held so tightly. The best fucking feeling I think I've ever had, like such a healing experience, right? So I would say that if she's having a meltdown, you need to be a sturdy fucking rock. Now, if you want to share something with her, then you want to make sure that she's not really stressed and in her head because she'll snap back because she's in her masculine. Let's say she did something like that really pissed you off and you're waiting for her to come home. She's had a crazy day at work and she walks through the door and she's stressed and you can tell maybe she's a bit flushed. Maybe she's just like got a headache. Maybe she's just like, she's not really, really present and relaxed in her body language. Don't tell her then because she's going to snap back at you. She needs to also be grounded if you want to have like an emotional conversation. If you and her are sitting on the sofa, for example, and she like wants to talk about, I don't know, like how she's feeling and she wants to know how you're feeling. Generally, they'll say like, how are you feeling? That's your invitation of this is how I'm feeling. And generally, if you think about it, that environment is going to be more intimate. It might be at nighttime. You might be on holidays. You might be on the sofa together or in bed. And you'll be really close and it will feel more intimate. That's the time and the place for emotions to come out. The time and the place for emotions to not come out is probably when she's doing work and she is a little bit more in her masculine. She needs you to kind of be that rock if she's crumbling. Also think about it like this as well. This is something that's also been really apparent with my clients. It's like, so for example, when we're working all day as women, we're generally pretty in our masculine unless you really know how to work in your feminine. Um, we're pretty in our masculine and then we will come home and we are craving to drop into our feminine, craving it. Now, men, I know that you guys have been in your masculine all day and you're craving some relaxation. So naturally you kind of want to flop too. We fucking hate that because we want to come home and we want to flop because we've been in control all day. So we want to flop and we want you guys to hold the fucking house down. So what would be really helpful for us is like, can you go do something between work and coming home. That's going to give you some energy. It's going to allow you to just de-stress for a second and get back into that ground and masculine energy so we can relax when we come home because that will also allow our libido to increase and allow us to let go of stress because stress, cortisol, adrenaline does deplete our libido. It'll allow that to just fuck off so that we can get back into our feminine energy, get back into our bodies. So we start to feel more open again to then want to have sex. And even, and, and even leading with that, like at nighttime, if we're really tired, like I was saying, the full play starts outside the bedroom. Ask your woman what tiny things turn her on. I did this with my Queen Alchemy girls yesterday. So the tiniest things. So when I say that, I was getting them to write a list of like the tiny things. Like, is it him cooking you dinner, him running you a bath? music being on, candles being lit, a new outfit. And this is like for yourself as well, like as a woman. Monica, are those all real? Like those examples that you're giving? Let's go through some of the ones from yesterday. Those are kind of like the classic Valentine's Day, like duh. What are the nuance that you hear with the the little things that turn women on? Okay, so like cleaning is always like, if you clean the kitchen after, it's like we don't then have to worry about that because otherwise we're cooking dinner knowing I have to clean the kitchen and it's like, oh, fuck that. So that's just annoying. Um, another one could be, for example, like you inviting us into and like inviting with no obligation or no pressure into the shower, you running us a bath. So we get home, you can be like, babe, I've run you a bath if you want it. If you want it, not like get your ass into the bath, you have to have a bath. Like if you want it, I've run you a bath. And if she says, I don't want a bath. Like, okay, no worries. Because she'll probably say yes in like an hour's time. I don't want to skip over that. That's really, really good right there. So just because we create something and offer something, if it comes with the obligation that it must be taken, right? Not a turn on. Or that you'll pout when she says no, right. then that's not sexy. It's kind of like you go back to that sturdiness, Monica. It's yeah. like, I'm making these invitations from such a sturdy place that when you say no, it's like, I really appreciate that you said no to that because like you're telling me very clearly what it is that you want and like you almost like your truth welcome her no 
And then you just you keep playing that game until you hit. And then she's like, yeah. Boundaries are aphrodisiacs. Like, for example, it's like, oh, like, I really want to go and, like, get some lunch. And then for him to be like, do you actually mind if I just, like, stay at the hotel and, like, have a nap for a bit so I can be a total vibe tonight? I'm like, absolutely, fucking lutely yes, yes, you stay. Like, that turns me on. Why? It turns me on and turns women on because we then know and trust that if there was something wrong, he would tell us and that he right. will never people please and then have resentment towards us. Right. Yeah. I think the part that you just said, like that he'll never people please is a big one. Do you mind if I nap today so I can be a vibe for tonight? And it's that second part that most guys like miss. It's just kind of like, I'm fucking exhausted. Can I take a, can I take a nap? Yeah. And then she feels dropped, mm -hmm. but it's like, I'm taking a nap today so I can be a vibe for tonight. And like, you're going to get my best me. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Brian, I want to ask you one question because Monica, you brought up something about when the workday is over, woman's been in her masculine all day and she's tired, but also like we get like, this is one of the things that we've talked about in our mastermind. Men are busting their asses all day long too. And like want to flop at the end of the night. Now I know, Bri, like your new startup business that you're running, you know, 16 hour days. And Becca is in a male dominated environment. Like she works as a, as a lawyer and she's busting her ass all day. What is it like for you when you're trying to heed the advice that Monica's giving where you're probably just looking to like flop on the couch at some point, but recognizing that maybe Becca needs something different? Like what, what is it that you've found successful? in maintaining your masculine in that relationship. I can tell you where, where I've been successful and where I've been unsuccessful because I think they're they're equally of use here. If I don't disconnect from what I'm doing on the day-to-day, -day, like on the work front, I can't be there for her. And so if my mind is still on the computer, still on the next thing that I got to get done, it's just, we can't connect. We can feel that. Yeah. Because we, we can feel it and we know that you're distant, you're not present with us. And this isn't a secret for you, Dominic, but there's been occasions Something I love about Becca is that that she brings this stuff to me. I think most women, uh, maybe they feel it, but they're not totally sure what's going on. She brings it to me. And she's like, I'm not enjoying this aspect of our relationship in some cases. Mm. And those have been the indicators that I need to say, oh, wow, I need, I, I have been too far heads down into the computer and, I, and I'm not taking time to step away from it. So I think the first thing is to just, Dominic, when you talk about your nighttime routine and you're like, you shut down the computer, you go through the steps, you go to bed, you don't bring the phone into the bedroom, right? It's kind of the same thing to step into the relationship. So that's been a, a really big one for me. Also, the second thing that, that does work is providing the space when she's there. There are some times where I need to be on the computer for 16 hours a day to get the things I need to get done. There are times where she's in that same space. And so finding some alignment between giving her the space, great, like, let me cook dinner. Can I cook something for you? And she does the same thing for me, by the way. So this isn't, I think sometimes this, this sounds like when we do these podcasts, like a one-way street, like we have to do all these things for the women. No, I love cooking dinner for men. Like I love nurturing. Like for me personally, I love nurturing. And so like I actually get pleasure sometimes out of cooking men dinner, not the other way. I love it the other way around as well. Don't get me wrong. But like I love, and I think also definitely with Corona as well, like I love looking after people, but also like I'm an extrovert and like I've been human deprived since coming to London compared to New York. So like, I love giving to other people as well. So, I mean, the bottom line is you definitely need to have this conversation with the woman that you're dating. And I also wanted to say as well, jumping back to the question, Dom, that you asked about like dating guys that are like into this versus not. I also want to say there is nothing wrong with not being into personal development. And I'm not saying that your woman won't be happy if you are not reading every fucking book, going to doing every mastermind X, Y, and Z, because like, I still believe that my James Bond is my soulmate. And no, he's, I don't know whether he's doing, actually, I phoned him the other day to see if he had a hacker. I told you guys that. I don't know if he's doing the work X, Y, and Z, but I'm also a big believer that like, if there is connection and if at least one of you is grounded and not just like jumping to conclusions and holding the space that you can navigate that because majority, like 95% of my clients 
uh, with men that are not into the personal development. And we have to sometimes plant the seed. And actually, I will say, so many of them listen to your podcast. Like yesterday, oh, wait, what are your friends' names again? Oh, yeah, Dom and Brian. I'm like, I'm seeing them tomorrow. Um, You guys always come up a conversation. So whilst a lot of them listen to these episodes and whatnot, which is obviously planting the seed and fucking amazing, I don't want any female listeners that are listening or male listeners to think I have to have a man that's into this because you don't. And I've helped so many women navigate their relationships where they're with men that don't have a man that's into this stuff. And like, fuck, you know, I've navigated relationships where, you know, I'm dating men that are not into this stuff and it's still been beautiful and amazing. And the reason why we can't be together isn't because just because he's not into personal development, it's various things. And I just don't want people to jump to that conclusion of like, they have to be into personal development because they don't. I think it's just really important that one of you is very secure because like even in attachment styles, if one of you is secure, it's very supportive to the other person. It's when two of you are just like insecure and you're all in your head and X, Y, and Z, that's kind of the recipe for disaster. Totally. Yeah. So this is great. Monica, one of the things that you were just talking about that I really want to double click on is you lit up when you talked about, like, I do love nurturing my man. I do love doing things for my man and I want to do more. One of the things that I have learned from women is like you and Madeline Moon are great examples of this. Like when I do something that you like, you make a huge deal out of it. I feel like a king. And I just had a conversation with Spring Madeline the other day. <laughs> yeah, it's like when I buy you spring bone or something like that. I was just having a conversation with Madeline the other day about like a like an idea she has to serve men clients. And I was like, and I helped her break it down. And at the end of it, she made this big deal out of like how I see special things in her and how I've dedicated time to her. She's like, I really appreciate you. And by the end of it, I'm like, what up? Like, is there anything else you want from me? Because like, this feels so good. Like, uh, and, and so when I receive something from a woman, I've learned how to make a big deal out of that. And guys, I want you to hear this. Like if she makes you a meal or she picks you up after whatever, like you need a ride somewhere. If she does something that you like, like make a big deal out of it. Not so that like you are manipulating her to do it again, but but like you truly show her how much you appreciate it. Cause like that will light her up. And I found that like women will do like, cause they want that nurturing. And tell me if this is correct, Monica. I feel like there's this nurturing side of women that has gone into hibernation for many of the reasons that you've brought up around like, I'm told not to be nurturing because then that's not like, that's not empowered. But like when called upon with respect from a man it feels like a gift to her. Yeah. Would you say that's so true? So even with the, the comment that you said of like, really appreciate her, but don't make it like manipulation. If she turns around and goes, you're only saying thank you so you can get into my bed, that is not on you. That is her. That is not on you. That is a her thing. If she takes shit like that and twists it, fucking Susan and Karen's, right? Like we were saying before, if she takes it and twists it as that means X, that's on her. It is not on you. Just like everyone. Okay. So in terms of the nurturing thing, yeah, I did an Instagram story a while ago, kind of just sharing how I had a client and like, finally, she's actually like, yes, work comes second, love and connection comes first. The feminine has love and connection as a top priority, not passion and purpose for mas- for the masculine the opposite way around. And I had a girl reply and she was like, thank you so much for giving me permission to actually put love and connection first because the honest truth is all I want to do is stay at home with my new baby and I don't want to go back to work, but like I feel like saying that I want to be a stay-at-home mom is a bad thing. And I'm like, this is the fucking problem, right? Because now women feel shame for wanting one of our natural core desires to have a family, to be a stay-at-home mom, to be excited for that, to nurture. It's like we now feel shame around doing that. Now, obviously, don't be a mother to your boyfriend or to your partner. However, as a woman, wanting to have a family or wanting to nurture or just play with kids and be a stay-at-home mom – that's great. Like if you want to do that, fucking celebrate that. I hate and like I fucking hate how society has now made it. Like if you are not a hustling girl boss, you're like not a woman or you're not good enough or you're not fighting for women's rights or anything. Or like the classic case that I'll get thrown at me of like a twisting of words is like because I talk about the stuff that I talk about, I am now saying women shouldn't get their rights that they got with voting. And I'm like, sorry, where did I put that in there? Like, I didn't put that in there. So, like, don't make the political stuff 
the energetic stuff because they're two separate kettles of fish, basically. Love it. Thank you. Any final words that you want to share with the group here, Monica, before we bounce? I would say the final thing, just like wrap everything up, is like integrity is fucking key. Like integrity over everything where when you say I'm going to do something, you're going to fucking do it. Even little things like I'm going to phone you at five tonight, fucking phone at five. Integrity. And I would say being there for her when it's obvious that she needs somebody, like is in a vulnerable situation, just shows that you are trustworthy and that you are that strong person. And with that, it's like not wavering with her emotions, never making her feel like her emotions are too much because a woman that is in touch with herself She might feel like a lot to your nervous system, but it's not that she is a lot. It's that your nervous system hasn't been trained to handle that. So in fact, you need to fucking sit in that shit and let her be a lot so you can like expand your nervous system. Because that's an important piece. And and as guys, when we're feeling that wave come up, usually from our stomach and up into our throat and almost like it wants to explode to solve the problem or to fix the crying or to whatever, that's what Monica is talking about. Sit in that. Let that be, feel it, allow yourself to feel it, and don't have to do anything with it. That is how the emotional system grows, right? That's, that, is, that quite literally is, is the inner work. And it's amazing what happens as guys when we don't take action in those moments. They're reactive yeah. action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. So I would say those would be the main things. You just like really be that, be stronger than you think she needs or that she wants. And honestly, just fucking ask her, ask her what she wants, ask her what sort of things turn her on and even say like, I'm happy for you to think about it and like, just write a list and give it to me. I just want to know how to please you. Like, that's what I would be saying would be the best things. And just that question alone would make her be like, okay, please impregnate me right now. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) Monica, thank you for all of this wisdom. And and so if, if men want to listen to your podcast to get more insider info, so the name of your podcast, and is there an episode that you would direct them to? I would mm-hmm. direct them to, there's actually one about expanding our nervous system that I did. So I would definitely listen to that one. I think I did one about, is your woman like too mm-hmm. much? There's one I did about the masculine and feminine. Okay, getting your man to lead in as masculine so that you can flow in your feminine, that'd be even a good one to listen to, 117. I would also do 115, how to balance your masculine and feminine energies in both men and women. That's trauma, nervous system, presence, all that kind of stuff. I would listen to 114 and I would also listen to your episode, obviously. I've done ones about like period sex and how to navigate that. That was like a while ago. I've done, oh, men's, no, that was with you guys, men's advice for COVID-19. And Monica, is it feminine as fuck now or is it cacao and convos? No, no, it's feminine as fuck. Our segment that we've been on is cacao and convos. Oh, That's the segment when I talk to like my friends, but it's called feminine as fuck. Feminine as fuck, got it. Episode 81, how I know that you're holding on to anger. It's for both men and women. Episode 78, harboring shame. 73, understanding period sex for men. There you go, I'll leave it at that. Okay, cool. Oh, wait, no, last one. 68, for my men, how to be in your masculine to guide her deeper into her feminine. There you go. The end. That's it. Cool. So I'm going to link all the, I'm going to link these in the show notes, as many of those as I can get in the yeah. show notes. <laughs> the show notes have a limit, Dominic, the character limit. Yeah. Yeah, we have a character <laughs> limit on this. Monica, thank you so much. It was awesome having you on our show. Thank you guys for, being, for having me. I really appreciate it. And we can't wait for the third time you come back. Yes. Can't wait for you to come back. Can't wait to hang in person again too. Oh, I know. I just want to be with you guys in person with fucking Springbone in New York City. I miss New York so much. Like, I think it's actually what's broken my heart the most this year, to be honest. Yeah. We miss you. Hey, I want to give a shout out to one of our listeners who wrote a glowing review on Apple Podcasts. This is from Rashad, who said, this podcast should be required listening for men who want to do the inner work and show up better for those that matter most. The episode that Dom Q did on fathers, which is an episode called, It's Time to Get More Curious About Your Father, truly inspired me to not only want to grow as a father, but to also take a serious look at the relationship I have with my father, who has been non-existent in my life. The advice given here is not just lip service, it is life-changing, actionable advice for all the men. Highly recommended. Thank you, Rashad. And if you have listened to this particular episode with Monica Yates and you loved what you heard here, would you consider leaving us a rating and review pointing the next man who needs to hear what happened in this episode 
as a bright shining light on where he needs to begin. Thank you very much.